All right. So glad you're back. Hope you all have your notes. Um, oh, goodness. I have the wrong glasses on. I'm sorry. There. That's better. Excuse me. It's time to begin. I hope that you all have your notes. And um, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, we want to meet with you, experience you. Lord, we truly believe that a relationship with you changes us fundamentally. God, I pray for your ministry of the Spirit. Lord, I pray that this lesson, this concept, would uh, bring life, would bless you. God, we praise you for what you're doing, that you're involved in our lives. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. All right, we continue our workshop. This is session three, Jesus interprets reality for us. So far you've learned that this personal relationship with God is an inside job. An interaction of your thoughts and Holy Spirit generated thoughts that come from God. This results in the kind of relationship the Bible or Jesus calls eternal life. So in this session we're going to explore a new concept. And maybe it's something that you've already figured out, so great. But we'll explore how Jesus is our best interpretation of all things, especially one of the most important things as to who the Father really is. So from my journal, here's what I woke up with. And so I'll just read it to you the way that I would like you to read your journal entries to the group. I woke up this morning with this thought. I am, that is Jesus, your best interpretation of everything about the Father. It reminded me of John 14, verse 6. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Lord, in many ways, this is really quite simple. Yes, a son reflects the Father, and this honors the Father. Without your Father, you would still be in Holland. My plans for you would not have been realized. Honor him, and that will please me. Bless and do not curse. You are a son. Act like one. Our object lesson are these glasses. These glasses uh, come from when I was 20, oh, 28 years old. There's something wrong with these glasses. They don't work anymore. They are fuzzy when I put them on. They distort things when I look through them. Uh, they were my sports glasses. I used to be able to see with them really well. I wonder what happened. <clears throat> I suggest that Jesus is like a pair of glasses. When you see life from his perspective, you really see it correctly. Key scripture, John chapter 14, 6 through 14. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. By the way, up there in the journal, uh, I'd like you to change that to verse 7, I believe. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? 
Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. What a profound piece of scripture. So, my opening statement is, Jesus is my best interpretation of who God is and what he is doing. Who God the Father is. In his first statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life, there's three things. The way is the way he's connected. His faith in the Father gives you access to the Father. His relationship gives him access. The level of that relationship it depends on, will, will determine your level of access. It'll determine your level of influence with the Father. It'll determine his level of influence with you. The truth is the revelation from the Father. The truth is really seeing life from the Father's perspective. It's the glasses through which you view the world. The life means eternal life. When you connect with God, it, with the Father, it, ra it raises you to a whole new level of, of, of uh, reality. Second statement, if you really knew me, you would know my Father. So, isn't that interesting? It's the same way with human relationships. But if you really knew me, you would know my Father. So experiencing Christ is like experiencing the Father. If, the, if Christ is consistent with the Father, then if you experience Christ, you experience the Father. That would clear up a lot of misinterpretations of what's going on in the world. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So, to see means to get it. Jesus does what he sees his Father doing. So when we experience Christ, you're experiencing the works of the Father, the doing of the Father. So, no, connecting with the Father, it's a big deal. I believe it's one of the biggest deals in the universe because uh, he is the source of life. He is the source of reality. He is the source of meaning and purpose. He's the one who created us. So if we're going to understand ourselves, he's the source of your own self-understanding. It is a huge deal. I believe that men and women without God, they will deny that area in their life. And you can read it in the writing. You can hear it from their, or you can see it in their lifestyle. They will um, deny it. They will um, tamp it down. They will um, make their own way. They will ignore it. Um, but without a connection to the Father, there is no meaning in life. I've never met an atheist who hasn't had a bad experience in church, and that's just my own little survey. It is the Father living in me who's doing His work. So you know, it's not so much my performance, it's me learning to do what I see the Father doing. The Spirit is that divine interface that connects me. We're on page two. Point number five, at least believe the evidence of the works. So uh, there are two witnesses, really, whether or not you're connected to God. It's the word you speak and the stuff you do. Whoever believes in me will do the work I've been doing. If you really believe in Jesus Christ, it results in the work. Now you can think about all kinds of, well, if you, you know, I don't see any work, must not believe. You can't say you believe if you don't do it. Verse 7 says, 
and they will be even greater things. There's a multiplication factor that happens when we start all following one Lord, one Savior, when we connect with Him. There's a, a wonderful um, peace that comes with, with interaction when a whole group is connecting with God together. It's like you, you've plugged into uh, nuclear power. It's like you've plugged into divine energy as a group, and it just multiplies. You can feel it. You can sense it. I remember when we started going to another church while I was going to seminary. It was the Assembly of God Church on 44th Street. And a mile away, a half a mile away, we could start anticipating. We could actually start experiencing the power of that service. Number eight, I will do whatever you ask. See, when you connect with what the Father's doing, then He gives you the authority to do. So when you have the Word of Christ, you have the authority of Christ to do the work of Christ, bringing glory to the Father. Profound. I've just scratched the surface. I believe the Spirit's going to help you plumb the depths of this. So, how do you apply this? Well, <laughs> here's the deal. Believers are the revelation of Christ to the world. You know, you've, you've heard Jesus say, don't put your light under a, you know, I've created you to be light on a hill. That is, express who I am to the world. John 17, verse 23 through 26. This comes from his prayer. I and them, you and me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me, that I myself may be in them. I and them and you and me. The key component is a faith relationship that's interactive. It's a trust level in each other. Your trust level and relationship will reflect the strength of the relationship. Brought to complete unity. Growing up in Christ is a process. So it's okay to start. It's oh, it doesn't matter where you're at in one sense. Although there is, there is the point where, where Paul said in, in Hebrews chapter 5, by now you ought to be teachers, but I have to tell you the, the, the basic principles all over again. So there's a process of becoming like him by interacting with him. So maturity in relationship reflects, if I'm mature in my relationship with Deanna, I will reflect her values when you meet me. When you meet her, you, she will reflect my values to let the world know. So it's not the miracles that convince the world. It's how we do relationship that convinces the world. When people start getting in touch with the kind of relationship that Deanna and I have, they start to want it too. Conclusion. Jesus is our best interpretation of God. He's the glasses, all right? He's the glasses through which we see spiritual reality. If you want to know who the Father is, look at Christ. Why is it so important to access the Father? Because He's the source. He's the source of life. He's the meaning to everything. His relationship, Christ's relationship with the Father is how we are to do relationship with Christ. Isn't that a wonderful connection? All right, now you're ready for group work. You're going to discuss four things. You're going to read Matthew chapter 8 about the storm. Was that an act of God? How many times have you heard people say this is an act of God? Insurance companies even use the word. Then on a scale of 0 to 10, you've, had, you've been in group now. This is your third, this is your third uh, or fourth time. So I need you to start being willing to uh, give some feedback on your group experience. And number three, what you believe about God is authenticated by how you do relationship with each other. Think about that. Discuss it. Do you agree with that? 
does the way you do relationship with each other affect the way that the church can evangelize? Do people want to join you? Do they want the kind of relationship with, with uh, you know, that you have with each other or with, that you have with God? Then ministry is where you start to need to tune into Jesus and what he's doing in the group. It's really important to bring now your journals, to read your, your journals to each other, to um, uh, start talking about how am I going to apply this, asking God, how, do you, how would you like me to apply this lesson? And I think that's what you could ask in that application, Lord, how would you like me to apply this lesson? Then find an issue that's, that, that you're dealing with in the group. Uh, you know, someone comes with a death, or somebody comes with, with uh, an issue in their personal lives. Remember, make it personal. Keep it confidential. Then update your prayer journals so we can pray for each other. Come with, with what you think might be a God word for someone in the group. God bless you. I'm so eager to see what happens in the growth of your group.